Cooking for a cause is like baking a cake. You need the right ingredients, the right tools, and the right timing. Otherwise, you'll end up with a mess. The secret to a successful outreach program is simple, feed them well and they will come back for more. Outreach activities are like cooking a gourmet meal. You have to plan ahead, work hard, and hope for the best. And sometimes, you have to improvise with what you have. There is no love sincerer than the love of food. Especially when it's for a good cause. Cooking is an art, but outreach is a science. You need to know your audience, your message, and your impact. And don't forget to measure your results. Some popular scallop dishes are seared scallops with garlic basil butter, creamy garlic scallops. Dinuguan or blood stew is a Filipino dish that consists of pork and pig's blood cooked with vinegar, garlic, onion, and spices. It is also known as chocolate meat because of its dark color. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the coconut tree. The best way to make fire with coconut leaves is to use a lighter. Coconut leaves are great for making fire, but they're also great for making smoke signals. Just in case you need to call for help. Some people say that making fire with coconut leaves is a skill. I say it's a miracle. Making fire with coconut leaves is like making lemonade with lemons. You need a lot of sugar. If you want to cook fried chicken with wet woods and coconut leaves, you better have a fire extinguisher handy. The only thing worse than burnt fried chicken is burnt fried chicken with wet woods and coconut leaves. Cooking with a dull knife is like driving with a flat tire. You'll get there, but it won't be pretty. A dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp one. Especially when you're chopping onions and crying your eyes out. The only thing worse than a bad cook is a bad cook with a dull knife. They'll ruin the food and your appetite. Some people say that cooking is an art. I say it's a survival skill. Especially when you have to use a dull knife. Cooking with a dull knife is like writing with a broken pencil. It's pointless. Webbing a coconut leaves for a surprise party is a lot of fun. Just make sure you don't get caught in the web. The best thing about webbing a coconut leaves for a surprise party is that you can reuse them for mat for overnight. They make great spider webs. Webbing a coconut leaves for a surprise party is a great idea. Unless you have a nut allergy. Some people say that webbing a coconut leaves for a surprise party is a skill. I say it's a hobby. Webbing a coconut leaves for a surprise party is like weaving a basket. You need patience, creativity, and a lot of coconuts. Webbing a coconut leaf toy ball is like knitting a sweater. You need patience, skill, and a lot of yarn. Except the yarn is green and prickly. The best thing about webbing a coconut leaf toy ball is that you can play with it anywhere. Just don't let it roll into the water. Or the fire. Or the road. Webbing a coconut leaf toy ball is a great exercise for your hands and your brain. It also makes a great weapon for your enemies. Some people say that webbing a coconut leaf toy ball is a waste of time. I say it's a waste of coconuts. Packing foods for the outreach program is a great way to help others. Eating burnt rice is a great way to help yourself. To the dentist. The best thing about packing foods for the outreach program is that you can share your love and compassion. The best thing about eating burnt rice is that you can share your pain and suffering. Packing foods for the outreach program is like making a sandwich. You need bread, cheese, and ham. Eating burnt rice is like making a toast. You need bread, fire, and smoke. Some people say that packing foods for the outreach program is a skill. I say it's a duty. Some people say that eating burnt rice is a skill. I say it's a mistake. Packing foods for the outreach program is like giving a gift. You need to wrap it nicely and put a bow on it. Eating burnt rice is like receiving a gift. You need to smile politely and pretend you like it. Cooking bami pancit is like making a rainbow. You need a lot of colors, a lot of noodles, and a lot of luck. The best thing about cooking bami pancit is that you can use any kind of meat, seafood, or vegetable you want. The worst thing is that you have to wash a lot of dishes. Bami pancit is a dish that combines two types of noodles, canton and sotangan. It's like having two lovers at the same time. You get the best of both worlds. Some people say that cooking bami pancit is a skill. I say it's a challenge. Especially when you have to balance the flavors, the textures, and the portions. Cooking bami pancit is like playing a game. You need strategy, creativity, and teamwork. And sometimes, you need to cheat. 
Cooking different dishes at the same time is like juggling knives. You need skill, concentration, and a lot of luck. And you still might end up cutting yourself. The only thing worse than cooking different dishes at the same time is serving them to different people. You never know who will like what, who will complain, or who will get sick. Cooking different dishes at the same time is a challenge. You have to balance the flavors, the temperatures, and the timing. And you have to do it all with a smile on your face. Some people say that cooking different dishes at the same time is a skill. I say it's a nightmare. Especially when you have to clean up afterwards. Cooking different dishes at the same time is like playing a game. You need strategy, creativity, and teamwork. And sometimes, you need to cheat. Cooking chop suey is like making a salad. You need a lot of veggies, a lot of dressing, and a lot of chopping. Except the veggies are cooked, the dressing is soy sauce, and the chopping is dangerous. The best thing about cooking chop suey is that you can use any kind of vegetable you want. The worst thing is that you have to use a lot of garlic, and onion, and ginger, and your breath will smell like a dragon. Chop suey is a dish that combines different types of vegetables. It's like a family reunion. You get to see all your relatives, even the ones you don't like. Some people say that cooking chop suey is a skill. I say it's a miracle. Especially when you have to make it look appetizing. Cooking chop suey is like playing a game. You need strategy, creativity, and teamwork. And sometimes, you need to cheat. The early bird gets the worm, but the late cook gets the praise. The best way to welcome our outreach visitors is to make them hungry. Hunger is the best sauce. Our outreach visitors are like family. They don't mind if the food is not ready. They just want to spend time with us. Some people say that cooking for our outreach visitors is a skill. I say it's a challenge. Especially when they arrive early. Cooking for our outreach visitors is like playing a game. You need strategy, creativity, and teamwork. And sometimes, you need to cheat. We saved the best for last. The Dinutwin is our final special dish. It's rich, hearty, and bloody delicious. It's not for the faint of heart. Literally. It's made with pig's heart and blood. It's like a vampire's dream come true. A bowl of blood with some meat and spices. Some people say that cooking dinuguan is a skill. I say it's a horror. Especially when you have to stir the blood and prevent it from clotting. Cooking dinuguan is like playing a game. You need strategy, creativity, and teamwork. And sometimes, you need to cheat. Cooking dinuguan is like making a potion. You need blood, meat, and magic. And a lot of courage. The dinuguan is our final special dish. It's a delicacy in Filipino cuisine. It's also a nightmare in vegetarian cuisine. The dinuguan is our final special dish. It's dark, thick, and mysterious. Just like my ex. Some people say that cooking dinuguan is a skill. I say it's a sacrifice. Especially when you have to kill the pig and collect the blood. Cooking dinuguan is like playing a game. You need strategy, creativity, and teamwork. And sometimes, you need to cheat. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you never miss an update from me. You know you want to. But seriously, thank you so much for your support and feedback. It means a lot to me and helps me grow as a creator. I love reading your comments and suggestions, so keep them coming. And if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments below. I'm always open to new challenges and collaboration. That's all for today, folks. Stay tuned for the next video, or I'll be doing something crazy and hilarious. You don't want to miss it. Trust me. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay awesome. Peace out.